to the continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Dorothy Malone as Constance McKenzie. Warner Anderson as Matthew Swain. Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. And Mia Farrow as Allison McKenzie. This is the Anderson house. Julie Anderson has fallen down a flight of stairs, her husband reports. And Dr. Michael Rossi is making his first emergency call in Peyton Place. Mr. Anderson? Oh, yes. Come in, Dr. Russo. Oh, for Rossi. Oh, yeah, Rossi. Well, where is Mrs. Anderson? Uh, she's upstairs in the bedroom. Uh, she fell coming down the stairs, tripped. Well, how did she get upstairs? Well, I carried her out. Usually, it's best not to move someone after a fall. Yeah, well, I just couldn't let her lie here. Uh, will you, Doctor? Oh, thank you. I'll, uh, I'll wait down here, shall I? Fine. The door right in front of you, at the head of the stairs. Better about Rod? I guess. Whose car's outside? The doctor's. Well, what's he doing here? Now, there's nothing to worry about, honey, but she, it's only a little accident. Your mother fell down the stairs. Oh. Oh, no, Daddy. Yeah, well, she's going to be all right, honey. Now, the doctor got here real fast. Now, don't worry, honey, bunch. Oh, come on, honey, bunch. Let's sit down. There's nothing you and me can do. But, Daddy, if she really hurt herself... I'm telling you, sweetheart, it is nothing but just a little joke. That's all. You know, your mother, she... She gets all hysterical and... Well, I couldn't calm her down. And so I did the next best thing. I played it safe and called the doc. He, uh... Seems like a decent enough fellow, this Rossi. Uh, have you seen him around yet? Once, I think. Oh. Oh, come on, honey. If there was anything really wrong, you know, I'd tell you, but I wouldn't hide it from you. You know how I feel about your mother. Oh, dear. <laughs> Everything seems to be going to pot around the old Anderson castle, doesn't it? What makes you say that? <laughs> well, your mother having this accident and you breaking off with Rod. Well, he broke off with me. Well, he'll come crawling back to you, too. Don't you forget that. You suppose Leslie said something to Rodney? What do you mean? I mean, if Leslie Harrington said that my little girl wasn't good enough for his son, I'd... Daddy, I don't know what he said, if anything. Has he been up there with Mother? A couple of minutes. Well, maybe you ought to go up there. He may need something. No, you call him if he does. You gonna keep wearing your hair that style? Honey, what's the matter? I'm sorry, Daddy. You've been hurt. I don't like to see my little girl get hurt. You're too good for him, honey. You remember that. Will you do a boy a favor just smiling at him? Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. Okay, Rod's father is Leslie Harrington, but he ain't the big shot he makes out to be. He doesn't own that mill. Old man Peyton owns it, lock, stock, and caboodle. Les just runs it for him, that's all. So don't be too impressed by the Harringtons. Daddy, I am thinking about Rod and Mother. 
Not about the Harringtons. I know that, sweetheart. She all right, Doctor? Well, I uh, have given her a sedative. I'd like to see her at my office tomorrow, Mr. Anderson. Yes, of course. Uh, excuse me, can I see her? Oh, Doctor, this is my daughter, Betty. How do you do? Hello. Uh, why do I have to take her to the office, Doctor? Well, just in case there are any complications, that's all. She must have had quite a fall down the steps. Yeah, well, uh, do you keep the same office hours Dr. Brooks used to? Yes, sir. Yeah. You know, it's a funny thing, Doctor. I, I'm out on the road, weeks on end. Rush, rush, in and out of airplanes, taxi cabs, never a scratch. But the first thing I come home, wham, something has to happen. Well, you didn't fall down the stairs, Mr. Anderson. Your wife did. You have good taste, Constance. Thank you. Just doesn't happen to be the same as mine. I'll browse around a bit, all right? All righty. Not much else to do. you were due back. I wasn't. But I did get back last night. Oh. Whoa, on there. Hold up. Let me give you a hand, honey. Oh, thank you, George. My pleasure, my love. What can I do for you today? Well, I'm going to pick up a little book for Julie. Something kooky, maybe. You know, with pictures. Give her a lot of laughs, you know. All right. I think I have just the thing. Good. Good. Very clever. What's so funny about this? A man sitting all huddled in the corner saying, who's afraid of anyone? It's just a comment, George. Maybe Julie would prefer a novel. Hmm? No, Connie, I want something funny. That's what I came in for. If I'd wanted a novel, I'd, I'd have asked you for a novel. All right, George. Try me again, Connie. Julie would like that? Sure, she'll be wild about it. All right, how is she? Julie? So-so. Mm -hmm. Guess what my big girl went and did? She was so anxious to see me when I came home, she tripped, wham, bang, and fell down the stairs. Julie fell down the stairs? What do you think of that? I think she must have been very careless. Do you really? Mrs. Harrington. You know, maybe you and I ought to have a little chat, Mrs. Harrington. About what, George? Mm, both my little girls are feeling kind of blue. Oh. Did Betty fall down, too? No, Mrs. Harrington. She was dropped. By Rodney. Now, George. What do you expect me to do about that? <laughs> Goodbye, Constance. Have a pleasant day. Thank you. Well, you see, there are no breaks, no complications. I wish there weren't. Well, nothing shows here. You said you slept well last night? After sedation. You use tranquilizers? No. Well, I'll write your prescription for some. Maybe you're better. Doctor, I talked with my daughter last night. She told me she'd come to see you. She didn't stay. I'm worried about her, for her. I don't know what to do. Well, you might tell her to come back here. Well, what if George asks questions about her seeing you? What do you think he might do? Oh, I don't know. He's... He's unpredictable. Miss Anderson, your history here shows that you had a fall about two years ago. What caused that? George flares up. Yes? 
But he can't help himself. Does he need help? He's angry. At what? Everything, everyone. I, he, he feels that... The world is against him? Yes. Is it? Well, things haven't gone well for George. You know, he was voted the most popular boy in high school, right here in our class. I thought I was very lucky when George fell in love with me. He used to say he'd bring me the world on my breakfast tray. Does he bring you a breakfast tray? Yes. Yes, I suppose I should be grateful. In many ways, I am. I still love him. Does he know that? Well, I tell him so. How? Every way I can. He doesn't believe me. Doctor, I'm not sure I believe myself anymore. We need help, your help. Both of you are just George. Can he be helped? Will he talk to me? No, I don't think so. Well, I'll try and talk to him. When? I'll look for a chance. In Peyton Place, people keep bumping in each other. Thank you, Doctor. About Betty, you know you're getting to know the whole Anderson family, aren't you? I came here to get to know the Anderson family. And help them, Doctor? Yes. In any way I can. something. I'll give you a laugh. Thanks, George. No kidding, and it'll really break you up. Thanks. Oh, thank you, Miss Brooks. Bill's. You want all the mail in here so ready. One personal letter. Oh, Carl Landau. The Dr. Landau? The Doctor. Michael, what are you doing in a provincial outpost like that Peyton place? Full of gloomy New Englanders. Those are almost his exact words. What are you going to write back to him? If I write back. And I'm sure I will. I'll tell him I'm looking for people, not names, on a list of bills at the end of the month, or a row of doorbells, or holes in computer punch cards. Just people. I might add, that I sound a little pretentious. I don't think so. You know, if I hadn't kept up the correspondence with your husband, if he hadn't died, if you hadn't written me... You'd still be in New York? I don't know. It isn't easy to take the place of a man that's loved and respected in the community. Can I tell you something, Doctor? Donald envied you. He would have given anything to have been a successful New York specialist. I had to tell you that. I'm not sorry I came here. Here's Mrs. Anderson's history. Part of the picture. George Whalock, traveling for Peyton Mills. Julie, working for my brother. Peyton Place is more complicated than you think. Oh. oh! I'm sorry, Doctor. Well, if you were going for a first down, I think you made it. Are you all right? That's just a broken tibia, that's all. You can have my medical benefits, and I'll come to the hospital to see you. All right, if that's a promise, I'll be on my way. ran into your daughter out there. I read this matter back, she ran into me. Uh-huh. So you see all the Mackenzies aren't running away from you? I should tell you I was on the track team in high school. Oh? 
Just thought I'd mention it. I'll keep it in mind. What can I do for you? Gave me some postcards. Oh, right over here. Just the last one? Mm -hmm. They go pretty fast. What, covered bridges or postcards? <laughs> Both. Okay, I'll take these and this one. Well, you have a lot of friends. I try to have, Miss McKenzie. Mm. Mrs. McKenzie, why did you come to my office yesterday? You came there to talk, didn't you? Yes. To my office? Yes. Well, why did you do that? I wanted to talk, and I did. In a doctor's office? Seemed like the best place. Because you felt that everything you told me there I couldn't reveal later. Did you think it would make any difference if you told me that here or, say, in your home? Did you have to try and put a gag on me? I didn't consciously. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Miss McKenzie, I want you to understand something. I want you to understand it completely. I touched upon a part of your life almost 18 years ago. Now, I touched it briefly and I touched it lightly. Now, I realize it touched you deeply, much more deeply. And I realize that part of your life, which now you seem to want to bury, brought you Allison. Now, from what I've seen of your daughter, Allison is a beautiful girl in every way. And I just want to tell you that, well, let me say it bluntly. You have no reason to try and shut me up or shut me out. And I'm not going to let you do that, Mrs. McKenzie. I like him. I wouldn't be going out with him, would I? Like, Abby, I said, like. Well, it's different for you. I've never been in love yet. Anyhow, you don't talk about love on the telephone. Well, he just asked me out once, and we went, and now he's asked me out again. Oh, the shoreline, I guess. Isn't that where everyone goes? Yeah, if everybody goes there, I could run into Betty Anderson. Well, I'll talk to you tomorrow, Abby. Come on. Come on, Come on, Mother. Come on. Oh, do you mind if I just finish listening to this record I'm playing? What is it? Romeo and Juliet. so, Dad. Put us down for the father-son tournament. We ought to sharpen up. Hey, I've got to get dressed. Date? Yeah. Betty Anderson? No. Someone new? Allison McKenzie. Nice girl. Very serious. Yes, she is. Rod. Yes, sir? I look, Rod. We've always been able to talk. Look, I gotta go in and get cleaned up. That could wait. Dad, what is there to talk about? I, I saw you kissing Mrs. Anderson in your office. That's all you saw. Dad, I walked in on you. I'm sorry. Let's forget it. There's something else I want to talk about. Mrs. Anderson's upset. Not so much about what you might think. She's upset about Betty. 
I can't help that, Dad. You're breaking off so suddenly. You never worried about Betty Anderson before. I'm worried about you, Rod. Oh, I'm all right. You can set your mind at ease about me. I'm fine. Dan? Betty's father just drove up. What's the matter? Nothing. Something's bugging you. Betty's father just came over to see Dad. What do you think he wants? Well, it could be business. He just got back from a selling trip. Could it be about you and Betty breaking up? No, he wouldn't be here about that. Maybe about Dad and Betty's mom. What are you talking about? You and Dad weren't exactly whispering just now in the other room. If you mention one word of this... Do you think I would? No, I guess not. Do you think Mom knows? I don't know. What about Betty? I didn't tell her. Does she suspect? Rod, Mr. Anderson doesn't come here for business. I mean, he must have come here about something. I wouldn't be too concerned about the order, George. If it doesn't come through next week, I'll fly to New York and wrap it up. I sell hard. You yeah, sure do, Les. Now, on Monday morning, we'll go over last month's figures. If you can bring in a few promotional ideas, it'll help. Sure thing. I guess that we've covered everything, George. Looks like, boss. Oh, I suppose you know Betty and Rodney have broken off. Nothing I can do about that, George. Rod makes his own decisions. Yeah. Let's leave the kids alone, George. They work things out for themselves. You remember how it was with us. Oh, sure, I remember. You were quite a boy. Well, Georgie made him laugh and Georgie made him cry. <laughs> Oh, I forgot to tell you, Julie had a little accident. What happened? Oh, she just fell down some stairs, banged up a little bit. She'll be more careful next time. Is there anything I can do? Well, I was uh, hoping to put off that Detroit-Cleveland trip a few days less. Julie's all right, isn't she? Oh, yes, but... Cleveland's important, George. Well, I've been spending an awful lot of time away lately, Les. That's your job. Yeah, but I was hoping to mend some fences here, Les. I gotta stay. Well, unless Cleveland just can't wait, in which case I'll, uh, I'll take her with me. I need her, George. Well, so do I, Les. Let me think it over. All right, you think it over. I guess he didn't say anything. Preview from the continuing story of Peyton Place. You tell me about Alison McKenzie. I'll tell you, Norm, she's a girl. She's a very healthy, good-looking, American small-town girl. You put her on a pedestal, Norm, and you're gonna take her down? Can I do something? No. Just leave me alone. 